this week's program, we talk with K-State Wheat Specialist, Dr. Romolo Lolato, about the recent virtual wheat tour and the virtual wheat field days. We'll also have features from the Kansas Soybean Commission and Kansas Department of Agriculture and our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association and Marcus, Paragon Ag Advisors. I'm Ken Rogers. This is Authentic Ag. Brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Kansas Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farm and ranch families since 1919, kfb.org. And the Kansas Wheat Commission, lending in the adoption of profitable innovations from wheat, online at kswheat.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks real people just like you and me and we're waiting on you to join us so for fun adventure fuel up fuel your body and let's have some fun Cultural news from agview.net. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way shoppers are filling their grocery needs. Throughout the pandemic, the Food Marketing Institute has been tracking consumer trends and charting how shopping behaviors are changing. Now, while it's uncertain how those trends will continue, the pandemic will permanently change consumer habits. Pre-coronavirus, the FMI projected that online food and beverage sales would equate to about $143 billion by 2025, representing about 18% of the expected overall $800 billion in combined online and in-store spending for food and beverages at home. But since the pandemic, about 21% of Americans have tried online shopping for the first time. 8% have returned, 19% are continuing to online shop. Research by FMI suggests that not everyone will continue to order online at the levels they were during the height of the pandemic, but they are likely to continue using it a bit more. Well, the latest Rural Main Street Index from Creighton University shows that farmland prices are declining while farmer borrowing is growing. Released a few days ago, the overall index for May increased to 12.5 from April's record low of 12.1 but down from March's week 35.5. You see the index ranges between 0 and 100 with a reading of 50, representing growth neutral. Farmland prices continue to slide. May's reading fell to 39.7 from an April reading of 40.9. Now this is the 77th time in the last 78 months the index has been below growth neutral. The May Farm Equipment Sales Index will increase slightly to 21.9 from 20 in April. That's the 80th straight month that the reading has remained below growth neutral at 50. And agriculture producers can now apply for USDA's Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, or CFAP. That provides direct payments to offset the impacts from coronavirus pandemic. The application and payment calculators are now available online, and USDA's Farm Service Agency staff members are available by phone, fax and online to help producers complete the application. The agency set up a call center as well in order to simplify how they serve new customers across the nation. Now applications will be accepted through August 28th of this year. Through CFAP, USDA is making available $16 billion for vital assistance to producers of agriculture commodities who have suffered at least 5% or greater price decline due to COVID-19 and face additional significant marketing costs as a result of lower demand, surplus production, as well as disruptions of shipping patterns and the orderly marketing of commodities. 
Now, producers will receive 80% of their maximum total payment upon approval of the application. Now, the remaining portion of the payment will not exceed the payment limit, will be paid at a later date nationwide as funds will remain available. We'll find more ag information online at agview.net. Stay with us. We'll have more in just a moment. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, but how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics and soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger-than-life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org. And joining us now is Dr. Romolo Lilato. He's weed specialist at K-State, and we're going to talk about a couple of things as uh, the Kansas wheat crop continues to get closer to harvest. Uh, Romolo, uh, thanks for, uh, for joining us. And uh, first, let's talk about an event that took place a few days ago, and that was uh, the, the wheat tour, kind of virtually because of this COVID-19 situation. The group didn't gather, but you and other specialists still took a tour of the state. Can you give us some highlights of what you found? I can definitely. So, yes, this was a, a new experience for us this year doing this virtually, but we had very good attendance every day. We had about 160 people join live for our reports there. So, essentially, we went throughout the state, right? We visited the first day of the tour, which was May 19th, the north central part of the state uh, and northwest. The second day of the tour, we went to west, west Central and Southwest Kansas, and the third day of the tour would have been South Central Kansas and Central Kansas. An overview of the crop at that point in time, right, May 19th through the May, uh, May 21st, is that in North Central Kansas, the crop was really, uh, really affected by that freeze damage that we had in the early April, and the combination of that freeze damage with drought stress, especially in that Phillipsburg area. As we move east from there, uh, it was, uh, it, uh, the effects of the freeze damage was less apparent, especially because we had more moisture as well. From Phillipsburg West, we could see uh, damage from the freeze, especially in crops that were planted late, after soybeans perhaps in central Kansas or after corn in western Kansas. Uh, whenever we talk about the west central part of the state uh, and southwest, right, um, that was more of a mixed bag. 
And so we had crops that were looking very good with a yield potential probably of 60 or even 70 bushels per acre, sometimes neighboring a crop that we were measuring 20 bushel per acre potential. A lot of that also had to do with crop rotation, especially in West Central Kansas, that area around uh, Leody, uh, Russell Springs in, in that area, right? So uh, crops that were planted after a long-term fallow period, they had more moisture, were in better shape than those planted late after corn. Southwest Kansas is where we were uh, finding the biggest concern, which was drought stress. Many of those fields around Libero or Sepenta, really southwest of uh, Dodge City, excluding the Mead area, because Mead is actually in pretty good shape, but west from Mead there, uh, many of the, those crops are actually uh, showing a new potential of bamboo per acre or something along those lines, if they were dry land. So that's where uh, we have the biggest yield heat from the drought. And then finally here in the central and south central part of the state, we saw some freeze damage uh, down to about Ellsworth County or Barton County. South from there, we didn't see much freeze damage or, or any whatsoever. The crop actually had a very good yield potential. We're measuring 60, 70 bushel per acre potential very consistently. But with the caveat that stripe rust was actually very, very prevalent. So stripe rust in that region was actually in every single field that we stopped at, sometimes in very concerning levels. And many times the grower had already passed the, 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 the label for fungicide application. So definitely we should see some yield heat from that stripe rust. So that's a quick overview of what we saw throughout the state in the wheat quality tour. Dr. Romolo Lalato, K-State Wheat Specialist, is our guest this week. Let's take a break and we'll talk field day in just a moment. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. And our guest this week is Romolo Lalato, a K-State Wheat Specialist. And we've talked about an overview of what the virtual wheat tour showed. Uh, also, something that uh, you and uh, your team had to adapt to, and that is doing a virtual field day. And uh, tell us about uh, that. Tell us about uh, what you told Kansas wheat producers. Hi, Ken. So, yes, as you mentioned, generally during this time of the year, we're doing anywhere from 50, 60, or 70 wheat plot tours throughout the state and talking to growers face-to-face, face face, which is a lot of fun. This year, we had to adapt. So, uh, we had this event, which was the virtual wheat field day. It was held Wednesday, May 27th, and Thursday, May 28th, and we had several different topics covered in those two events. So in the first day, actually, uh, I covered some of the wheat variety selection considerations that growers should have, uh, not going into specific varieties, but really uh, based on the cropping system that the grower has, based on his region within the state, based on his previous crop and other conditions, how should that variety selection uh, decision be made? Then we had uh, Dr. Eric DeWolf, extension uh, plant pathologist with, uh, with K-State. He discussed uh, what's the conditions of diseases around Kansas during the 2020 wheat growing season. We also had uh, Dr. Lucas Hag, the Northwest area agronomist, discuss variety selection for Western Kansas. He went a little bit more in detail into the different varieties that has been, have been established already as good performers and some of the new ones to be keeping, a look, uh, keeping an eye on. That day, we also introduced Kelsey Anderson. She's the new extension pathologist who will be taking place, uh, Eric DeWolf place, as he moved on to a more research position. The second day was also quite interesting. We had the two breeders, uh, Alan Fritz and Gurong Zhang, give an overview of their programs. Also talk about the current varieties that they have adapted for different parts of the state and what's coming down the line, right? What's coming up down the pipeline there as new varieties that growers can be expecting for those different parts of the state. We also had Stu Duncan give an overview of uh, variety selection for Central Kansas. He is the area agronomist uh, for, for North, Northeast Kansas. 
And finally, Aaron Harris with the Kansas Sweet Commission. He gave an overview of, uh, of research that is being sponsored by checkoff dollars from producers, so, so by, by the Wheat Commission. So overall, we had that event, and we're also having several uh, demonstration plots that are going virtual. So we're recording those with county agents, and uh, on, on those plots, we're, we're actually making a more local discussion of how different varieties are adapted to different regions of the state, and county agents are sharing those with their growers. And so if folks want to uh, uh, kind of review those field days, those virtual field days, if they weren't able to be there, tell, tell us the YouTube channel. Also, uh, you have a lot of information that comes out every week in those agronomy e-updates. How can folks get that as well? Yeah, so uh, agronomy updates, folks can go to the K-State Agronomy website and send an email uh, to, to the extension personnel there to be added to the list. We send that, that information every every Friday. Quite a bit of good information about all the different crops and conditions around the state. Uh, these events, they were held through the K-State Agronomy uh, YouTube channel. So folks can go to the K-State Department of Agronomy on, within YouTube and find that information there. And we're, we're also sharing that in social media through Twitter or Facebook, and that will be uh, at KSU Week in both of those platforms, Twitter or Facebook. So uh, within those four platforms, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and the agronomy updates, folks can really get up to date on everything that is going on uh, as far as wheat crop and many other crops go around the state. Romolo Lalato, K-State Wheat Specialist, has joined us. Stay with us. We'll have more coming up. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. As soybean plants across Kansas emerge and grow, so do many obstacles affecting plant vitality. Scouting for pests or just tracking field development can be a lot easier with the right integration of technology. The Tech Tool Shed, a resource from the United Soybean Board, helps farmers integrate, maximize, and manage technology use on the farm. The tool shed shares some free mobile apps that could be useful this season. To quickly count aphids and keep that data, try Aphid Speed Scout. The app captures a photo of your infested leaf and compares that within a library of photos, then recommends next steps. If weeds have you stumped, ID Weeds has answers for your questions. With a variety of search functions included, the app helps you identify those uninvited guests in your field. If you're wondering what you should even be looking for, the Farm Dog app utilizes GPS during scouting to generate a list of pests to be vigilant for. You can also schedule future scouting visits, add new locations, and export reports. BeanCam is a decision-making resource for low population fields. It calculates the stand and suggests if you should replant. It's able to predict the percent yield at harvest with a replant and without for your consideration. Farm Logs helps you manage each of your fields by providing historical data, notes, and photos for each of your determined locations. For large operations, Cirrus, spelled S-I-R-R-U-S, allows individuals within the same operation to provide updates on field activities and then export and share reports. It's also useful for collaborating with neighboring farms. Data that was once recorded by pen and paper can now be kept in the cloud and be more accessible to you when you need it. Check out unitedsoybean.org slash tech toolshed to see how technology fits your farming operation and be sure to follow Tech Toolshed on Twitter. I'm Bob Swartz and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial, values, commitment, and transparency. Many seed companies claim to offer the latest genetics, 
But how many have tested those genetics in soils just like yours? The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Research Program has fully tested the latest seed genetics and soils that are right in your neighborhood. The Oldie Seed Know to Grow Program can recommend the best performing hybrids from technologies like Enlist, Extend, and Liberty Link that will optimize the yield and profit of every acre on your farm. Contact Oldie Seed today. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. The Kansas Department of Agriculture is committed to supporting ag education and FFA throughout the state because we know that today's ag ed students are tomorrow's agriculture leaders and agriculture workforce. I'm Russell Plaschka, a former ag ed teacher and current director of ag career and workforce development at KDA. Usually during the end of May, Manhattan is swarming with blue jackets as K-State hosts the state FFA convention. Unfortunately, due to the risk posed by such a large event during the Corona's pandemic, as well as statewide restrictions on mass gatherings, the convention was held as a condensed virtual event this year. It certainly was different, as FFA members couldn't gather in one place, but that didn't stop the program from continuing to recognize outstanding members and chapters for what they have accomplished this year. As we honor recipients of proficiency awards, national chapter awards, and state FFA degrees, as well as Kansas Star winners, no matter how we celebrate it publicly, FFA will continue to make a difference in the lives of students in communities throughout Kansas and to develop valuable leadership and skills through this educational program. Ag education in Kansas schools combines classroom instruction with experiential service and work-based learning through supervised agricultural experience programs. These are known as SAEs. These give students hands-on experiences in workplace settings in their communities. FFA also provides a critical leadership component, including training in public speaking, parliamentary procedure, and current ag issues. Agriculture education prepares students for successful careers and a lifetime of informed choices in the global agriculture, food, fiber, and natural resource systems. KDA is proud to support FFA, as agriculture education is the foundation for the future of agriculture. For more information about FFA or ag education in Kansas, go to our website at agriculture.ks.gov slash ag-ed. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. USDA has announced the details of the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program, including how it will be implemented and how payments will be dispersed. The program will provide $16 billion in direct payments to agricultural producers from two sources, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Stability Act and the Commodity Credit Corporation Charter Act. The application period began May 26th and will end August 28th. Payments should be received 7 to 10 days after the date of submission. Producers should call their Farm Service Agency office for application information. CFAP assistance is available to producers who have an ownership interest in eligible livestock that have suffered a 5% or greater price decline as a result of the pandemic and face additional significant cost in marketing their inventories due to unexpected surplus in disrupted markets. Livestock eligible for CFAP include cattle, hogs, and sheep. A single payment for livestock will be calculated using the sum of the producer's number of livestock sold between January 15th and April 15th of this year, multiplied by the CARES Act payment rates per head. 
and the highest inventory number of livestock between April 16th and May 14th of 2020 multiplied by the Commodity Credit Corporation payment rate per head. KLA recently hosted a webinar to discuss the details of the program, including the payment breakdowns. The webinar and additional CFAP information can be found on KLA.org. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Good morning, I'm Darren Van Vactor with Paragon Ag, a division of Keiko Isom. The cool damp weather seems to be acting like a wet blanket on the grain markets. Corn has been lethargic, wheat has given up some ground, and beans have been checking the 50-day moving average. Things have been relatively quiet from a headline standpoint as the U.S.-Chinese trade tensions seem to be the norm anymore. Although things have been quiet, Mother Nature may have something to say over the months ahead as weather volatility comes to the forefront. Last week's cattle on feed report is, was in line with what many expected and the cattle have continued to steady climb, reaching some of the highest levels seen since March. Hogs have also gained back to about half of their losses since March. Everyone's continued to watch the cash trade and the packers' ability to process protein as of late. Probably the biggest news has been the coronavirus food assistance program announced last week. The program is geared towards assisting producers who have suffered market impact from COVID-19 pandemic. You will find specific information by commodity at www.farmers.gov forward slash CFAP or by contacting your local FSA office. Taking stock of the latest government program is important when looking ahead on your marketing. Try to look at it as a way to keep moving, not as a reason to sit still. If you're having a hard time seeing the possibilities, give us a call here at Paragon Ag Advisors, 888-452-8751. I'm Darren Van Vactor. Be safe and have a great week. Well, that's our show this week. If you have questions, concern, or even suggestions, email me, Ken Rogers, Ken at agview.net. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Authentic Ag. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn. For livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com.